The field of paleoanthropology stands on the edge of a new age, and 2026 may reveal several groundbreaking new discoveries, especially in the field of human evolution. The story of our origins has always been pieced together from fragmentary bones, scattered stone tools, and rare fossils that somehow survived the destructive forces of time. Yet for all that has been found, vast chapters of our past remain mysterious. Who were the first human-like creatures to reach Asia? How did the enigmatic hobbits of Flores Island evolve? And how are they related to modern humans? And could one of the oldest and most famous fossils of all, Java Man, still hold genetic secrets after more than a million years in a tropical climate? Over the last few years, new technologies have begun to rewrite what is possible. Ancient DNA sequencing has pushed further into deep time and hostile environments than anyone once believed. Proteogenomics has created a way to find genetic clues, even where DNA was thought to be destroyed. Digital imaging has brought crushed fossils back to life in three-dimensional detail. As these methods converge, 2026 is going to be a year when long-standing enigmas could finally yield their secrets. Scientists may finally announce the discovery of the long-sought, elusive, missing link. Several interrelated discoveries are especially poised to change the way we think about our species. If current projects succeed, we may soon see the first genetic portrait of Homo floresiensis, the tiny island dwellers of Indonesia who have puzzled scientists for two decades. We may finally get to examine an intact one-million-year-old skull from central China that could clarify the role of Asia in human evolution. While Europe and Africa have yielded a rich fossil record, Asia's role in human evolution remains unsettled. The region has produced important human fossil finds, but many are fragmentary or poorly dated, leaving scientists unsure whether Asia was a cradle of enduring lineages or merely a crossroads. That uncertainty may soon end, thanks to a remarkable discovery in Hubei province, China. In 2023, Chinese archaeologists announced the unearthing of a largely intact human cranium at the Xuetangliangzi site in the Yunyang district. Dubbed Yongxian III, this skull lies near where two earlier finds, Yongxian I and II, were recovered decades ago. Those first skulls, dated between 800,000 and 1.1 million years old, were crushed and distorted, making them difficult to interpret. The Yongxian III excavation encountered difficulties as the third skull was surrounded by multiple animal fossils. It took archaeologists six months to remove the rock surrounding the skull and separate the human fossils from animal fossils and stone items. Researchers carried out three-dimensional modelling over 20 times, took more than 200,000 photos, videoed the whole excavation process and extracted more than 1,400 sedimentary samples. Yongxian III, by contrast, appears almost pristine, with frontal bone, eye sockets, cheekbone and temporal regions intact. What's more, there is a remarkable similarity in both size and morphology between the facial skeletons of Sangiran 17 from Java and Yongxian Man. Yongxian is possibly the best preserved million-year-old human skull ever found in the Eurasian interior. Since then, a battery of cutting-edge analyses has brought this fossil to life. Scientists have refined its age using geomagnetic reversals in the sediments, optical dating of grains of quartz, and cosmogenic nuclide exposure techniques. Advanced imaging has created a digital model of the skull, undoing any subtle distortions and allowing comparisons with fossils across the world. Molecular specialists will analyze the surrounding sediments for preserved proteins or even fragments of DNA. Why is this groundbreaking? Because Jungsian III sits at a pivotal point in time and space. It shows classic modern human features and will confirm that Asia hosted a long-lived, stable population that may have persisted for hundreds of thousands of years with little change. The fossil will also provide a third skull, with traits linking it to later lineages, such as the mysterious Denisovans, and even to early Homo sapiens, cementing the story of a more dynamic story of evolution and migration. Most researchers suspect that Denisovans, whose DNA has been found in modern Asian and Oceanian peoples, but whose fossils are scarce, may have roots in East Asian fossils. 
Jungxian 3 could offer the even more solid anatomical support for that idea and also connect to more ancient fossils such as Java Man. In fact, Java Man may turn out to be the long-sought missing link between archaic and modern humans. Jungxian 3 is going to be central to testing the relationships of Jungxian 1 and Jungxian 2, which was already one of the most groundbreaking new studies released in 2025. Not being able to see that key fossil means that nobody has been able to evaluate the evidence fully. With the new reconstruction of Jungxian 3, we can now declare that Asia was the birthplace of modern humans one million years ago. In fact, the news will transform the study of Asian human origins. For decades, the field has struggled with incomplete, distorted fossils and uncertain timelines. A single, beautifully preserved skull, precisely dated and digitally reconstructed, could anchor the entire narrative. It will prove that East Asia was not an isolated evolutionary stage, but a source of human diversity that still echoes in our genes. If Jungxian man is not Homo erectus, then what about Java man, Peking man and other Asian fossils? In 2026, we may finally abandon the outdated and confusing idea of species in modern human evolution. Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis are names that have been applied to fossils across a wide region of space and time, often without any connection to one another. Older African fossils may still be given the name Homo erectus, but the Eurasian fossils will no longer use this term, and heidelbergensis will become dead species once again. Instead, all human fossils will be represented in a chart and grouped by clades, so we can see the relationships between different fossils in space and time. If these breakthroughs arrive as expected, 2026 will be remembered as a turning point in the science of human evolution. We may learn that Homo floresiensis represents a deeply ancient branch of humanity, preserving the echo of the first wanderers to reach Asia. We may discover that Neanderthals were living in Britain during a warm age 120,000 years ago, their DNA still locked in the soil beneath a medieval castle. We may finally gaze upon the undistorted face of Jungxian III and decide whether East Asia nurtured its own enduring human lineage or served as a springboard for later groups like the Denisovans. And we may find that the ancestor of Jungxian man was the famous Java man, the fossil that changed history once before and could do so again. And perhaps most astonishing of all, we may hear a genetic whisper from Java Man himself, the fossil that first proved our ancestors walked the earth far earlier than the Bible once suggested. Each of these breakthroughs is within reach. Together, they could redraw the family tree of humankind. The fossil known as Java Man has been a symbol of early human evolution for more than a century, and the original missing link. Discovered in the Sanjiran region of Java, Indonesia, it proved that our ancestors walked the earth long before the biblical 6,000-year mark and helped establish that humans were a widespread, long-lived species. Yet for all its historical importance, the 1.3 million-year-old Java man has remained silent on the molecular level. The humid tropics seem to have erased any DNA long ago, and the fossils were collected under 19th-century conditions with little regard for future genetic work. That silence may soon end. According to an article in National Geographic, the University of Copenhagen and Indonesian partners are quietly preparing to test whether modern proteogenomic methods can recover genetic material from the teeth of Java man. Advances in protein sequencing have made it possible to detect the faintest molecular signatures in enamel and dentin, even after a million years in hot climates. Once those protein maps are known, Researchers can search for matching fragments of DNA still clinging to the mineral matrix. Ultra-sensitive sequencing and new contamination control methods are making it feasible to work with even the most degraded samples. If these efforts succeed, the genetic data from Java Man could answer major questions. Were the long-lived populations of Southeast Asia closely related to African hominins, or did they represent a distinct branch that evolved in isolation for hundreds of thousands of years? How do they connect to the tiny Homo floresiensis of nearby Flores, which may have descended from an early Javanese stock? Did later arrivals of modern humans encounter and perhaps interbreed with these ancient islanders? A successful extraction would also prove 
that even century-old fossils collected without modern precautions can yield genetic clues. It would expand the reach of ancient DNA into regions long thought hopeless, allowing Southeast Asia to take its rightful place in the genomic map of human evolution. Java Man, once a purely anatomical icon, could become a genetic keystone linking the archaic past of Asia to the broader human story. Over 20 years ago, when scientists announced the discovery of a tiny human skeleton in Liang Bua Cave on the Indonesian island of Flores, the world has been fascinated by Homo floresiensis. Nicknamed the Hobbit for its short stature, it possessed a body little more than a meter tall and a brain the size of a chimpanzee's, yet it made sophisticated stone tools and hunted giant rats and pygmy elephants. For years, experts debated its origin. Some saw it as a dwarf descendant of Java Man, an offshoot of the first humans to leave Africa that shrank in isolation. Others argued that its anatomy looked far too primitive, more akin to earlier humans such as Homo habilis or even Australopithecines. Genetics should have settled the question, but the steamy heat and humidity of tropical Indonesia quickly destroyed DNA. Each attempt to sequence genetic material from Flores fossils had ended in failure. Until recently, researchers doubted that any trace of the hobbit's genome could survive after 50,000 years in such a hostile climate. But a quiet revolution has been taking place in molecular anthropology. Proteogenomics, an approach that combines the study of durable ancient proteins with the hunt for surviving DNA fragments, has begun to crack cases once thought hopeless. According to Nobel Prize-winning geneticist Svante Pablo, a collaborative team from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology and Southeast Asian Partners is expected to announce that they have succeeded where others failed. Working on a single tooth from Liang Bua, they used proteogenomics to chart the proteins locked within the enamel and dentin. Tooth enamel is the hardest substance in the human body and often preserves well even when DNA breaks down. By sequencing its ancient proteins, scientists can reconstruct parts of the tooth's original genetic blueprint. Those protein signatures act like a map, guiding researchers to tiny, damaged pieces of DNA still attached to the mineral matrix. In ultra-sterile clean rooms, technicians have teased out and amplified those genetic crumbs. Preliminary comparisons to a global database of ancient genomes suggest a startling conclusion. Homo floresiensis may not simply be a miniaturized form of Java man. Its genetic lineage appears to have branched off earlier, before the classic human anatomy fully evolved. This would mean the first humans to reach Southeast Asia were far more archaic than anyone suspected, possibly stemming from a wave of pioneers that left Africa long before Java man and Peking man dominated the old world. Furthermore, rather than being a dwarf offshoot, did Homo floresiensis actually interbreed with other humans? If confirmed, the implications are profound. Flores would stand as a time capsule preserving an early human experiment, one that survived in splendid isolation long after its relatives disappeared elsewhere. It would prove that Asia was colonized by multiple distinct human lineages over hundreds of thousands of years, not by a single march of archaic hominins followed by modern humans. It would also suggest that the roots of humanity's wanderlust stretch back far beyond the first big brain species. A single molar, buried for tens of millennia in a tropical cave, may soon force textbooks to rewrite the timeline of our earliest journeys. These discoveries will not just add details to an existing picture. They will force a rethinking of human origins as a complex, braided river rather than a single stream. They will show that many different kinds of humans explored, adapted, and sometimes endured in places we once assumed were empty or occupied only by one lineage. They will prove that tropical heat and deep time are no longer insurmountable barriers to genetics. They will demonstrate the power of new technologies to recover voices from the most unlikely of places, a tooth in a humid cave, the crushed skulls of central China, or the million-year-old fossils of Java. And let's all have a moment of silence for the outdated species names we will no longer be using. Homo heidelbergensis, Homo soloensis, Homo bodoensis, Homo rhodesiensis, Homo daliensis, Homo rudolfensis, Homo ergaster, 
and all of their various subspecies. Most of all, they will remind us how contingent and surprising our history is. Tiny, fragile remnants hold the power to overturn long-held assumptions. A tooth can speak across a million years, a patch of earth can whisper of forgotten ancestors, a crushed skull can return to life through digital reconstruction. A fossil collected by a colonial-era explorer can still share its genes with the modern world. The year 2026 may be when these voices rise together, telling a stranger, more diverse and more awe-inspiring tale of human origins than ever before. Be sure to check out some of these other videos to learn more about our human journey.